Hello, everyone. I am so excited. Today we have with us Janet Scardino. She's the CEO of Comic Relief USA. We're talking about how you can have fun while raising lots and lots and lots of money for helping children escape poverty. So you don't want to miss this episode. Stick around. Welcome to the Your Mark on the World show with your champion of social good, Devin D. Thorpe. Janet, welcome to the show. Hi, Devin. Thank you so much for having me. Well, we're thrilled to have you. It's, uh, it's an honor. Uh, my heavens, uh, Comic Relief USA, uh, Red Nose Day, uh, you've raised a lot of money over the years for helping kids get out of poverty, haven't you? We have. We've been really blessed with incredibly in such generosity by the American public, by our partners. We've raised um, nearly $150 million in four years, which has allowed us to help um, over 16 million children. So it's, it is real, um, it's a real scale impact and we're incredibly proud. Now, most of that money, I think, comes from individual donations, from people buying red noses and other red nose paraphernalia uh, in anticipation of Red Nose Day. And the next one's coming up May 23rd, right? That's right. Thursday, May 23rd. It's the Thursday before Memorial Day. So it's the kickoff of the summer. Um, and uh, you're right that about half of the monies that come into the organization do come from the general public. And about the other half are from corporate partners as well as foundations, including the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Let's talk a little bit about your corporate partner relationships. You've got some great corporate partners. Who are they? They are outstanding. Uh, the, the home of the iconic red nose, um, I always have to do this because everybody <laughs> can't help but laugh when that happens. Yeah, that's right. Um, iconic, uh, the home of this iconic red nose is Walgreens. And Walgreens from coast to coast across the entire country and Puerto Rico um, sells these noses and their, their employees are incredibly passionate um, about, about Red Nose Day. Uh, another partner is M&M's um, and they too have been involved from the very start. And our media partner is NBC and Comcast NBCU, which gives us incredible, uh, a real platform to tell stories um, and not only on Red Nose Day but for the entire campaign leading up to it so uh, and then of course as I mentioned Bill and Melinda Gates have gave us our startup our seed mon money uh, to start uh, Comic Relief USA so we do have outstanding partners oh that's great uh, the I, I'm curious a little bit about um, tell us about the events on and leading up to Red Nose Day on May 23rd, and so, what NBC specifically will be doing to support you. Sure, no, it's, it's a really great point. We, we typically get, get some attention just at the point where noses go on sale. So this year, that was um, April 22nd, and we'll, you may see us on the Today Show and, and other places uh, across the dial on NBC and primetime, sort of giving a bit of that promotional support. And then there'll be an entire promo campaign uh, leading up to a three-hour primetime block where we will have um, a combination of a you know, star-studded night of, t of television, a special, the Red Nose Day special, which includes a lot of music and comedy, uh, as well as shining a light on some serious uh, issues with our appeal films. And then at the end of the night, we'll have Hollywood Game Night, which again, a celebrity version of a, of a fan favorite hosted by Jane Lynch. Um, and that will really close the night um, for Red Nose Day this year. That will be so much fun. And tell us a little bit about the partnership with m and How does that work? So M&M's has, again, been a partner, not only here in the U.S. from the very beginning, but also in the U.K. Um, you know, we have our roots in, in the U.K., and it's been around uh, almost over 30 years. And, uh, and Mars has been a very important partner with the M&M's brand. So the M&M characters, which, you know, it's an organization that, that does already so much good. Um, but it's, I think it's hard sometimes for brands like M&M's, which are all about entertainment and fun, um, to be tied to serious causes. So I think they saw something like a Red Nose Day as a great opportunity to really have the characters, um, you know, red and round and uh, as well as the other color characters, um, put a red nose on and, uh, and really in, in encourage their fan base to get involved. And they also have leveraged us with, uh, you know, they do things at NASCAR. So we'll, we'll completely wrap a car, a NASCAR, their NASCAR, I should say, uh, with Red Nose Day branding and the characters. So they do so much to support us. Well, that's great. And, uh, 
I guess at some point that translates into dollars coming from them it or does. pounds. It does. They do. I mean, the proceeds from the sale of uh, the M&Ms during our campaign uh, time frame within Walgreens uh, do those. Those are proceeds that uh, come to the cause. And and it's true that Walgreens actually enlists a number of brands. So we're really blessed with the likes of Coca-Cola and P&G and um, you know, so many brands that they really bring to the forefront. And again, proceeds from sales of product, uh, they're proud supporters and they too make generous donations to Red Nose Day at Walgreens. Oh, that's great. Well, you know, Walgreens is a great community partner. So many places around the country, uh, life revolves around the local drugstore. And for most of us, or many of us at least, that's a, that's a Walgreens. They, they actually have been so funny this year. Can I just hint to a new thing that's happening? And yeah, it's, it's incredible. I'm trying to make this. It's hard because now instead of having just one nose, as we've had for the last four years, we actually have. And the reason I'm hesitating is I'm trying to put them all on my fingers. We have five. <laughs> <laughs> so this five is high five. These are character-based noses for the first time. And this is a, this was actually something that we were we were inspired from uh, the UK. And some stars do this and this. Uh, yeah. But the inspiration was that each character allows us to tell stories about specific things we do. So Scarlet, as an example, is really focused on hunger. Um, um, we have another character focused on homelessness, another on medical attention and making sure that sick children have the very basics, and of course, literacy with um, literacy, <laughs> with, um, and, and really demonstrating the impact that we're doing in education. So this is a way for us to tell that holistic story of what's unique about Red Nose Day and that we really think about the whole child and the, the fact that they need, of course, we have to make sure they don't go to bed hungry, but equally they do need access to basic medical attention. They have to ensure, we have to ensure that they have a safe place, whether it's a home or a safe place after school. And, and clearly education is truly the, the gateway for children to, to really take their lives and have their brightest future. So we really look at that holistic um, view and the characters this year are allowing us and allowing parents also to talk about the issues of child poverty with their children and really make them aware and put the, their, themselves in the, the shoes of kids who are less privileged. Um, and equally re recognizing that it's, we make it fun to make a difference. We allow both kids and adults with a simple gesture buy a nose, put on a nose, take a selfie, yeah. share, but watch TV. We're, we're making it fun for people to come into what would otherwise be a really serious subject um, and put a spotlight on it and let people know that small gestures can have big impact. Well, this is a, uh, a wonderful initiative that you're doing. As you look at your impact partners, tell us a little bit about where the money goes because you're not delivering services to children, you're delivering dollars to partner agencies that are that are delivering, in fact, those benefits, right? That's right. We we really our mission is to raise awareness and to raise the funds, and then to really judiciously make sure that those monies are are absolutely committed in the best, most effective um, programs. So those will span. Um, we basically have about a dozen uh, core partners. Fifty percent of our money is focused here in the in the U.S. across all fifty states and Puerto Rico, and fifty percent internationally across Southeast Asia, Latin America, and Africa. And we, again, benefiting from that long history in the UK where they've made, I think collectively we've made over 25,000 grants. So we are, there's a, an expertise in finding those specific initiatives that have the absolutely the best impact. So you may, Feeding America is a great example. They're one of our partners. Our monies are not going to Feeding America food banks at large. They're really focused on backpack programs that allow kids to be heroes at home by bringing 30 pounds of food home to their family and making sure that they have food when they go home at night. Uh, summer backpack programs, another initiative. When kids are not in school, they're missing out on school lunches. So um, our our monies are really t tailored uh, for those very specific initiatives um, and oftentimes the ones where we're really looking at the children, as an example, is with Children's Health Fund, another great example. They, we, we fund um, mobile health vans that go to kids where they are because so many of them can't really get to medical facilities and, and frankly couldn't afford them. Um, and so by bringing that, those facilities directly to either shelters or bringing them to communities that are underserved, rural communities, urban communities, we're really able to get to the kids who need it most. 
It's a really an important model. I wonder if you would, do you care to call out some of the other partners that you uh, regularly give money to? Sure. I mean, we, we really are, we're benefiting from the Global Fund, which is one a, a partner that is exceptional in providing vaccines and vaccinations. I know you've covered this um, yourself and, and polio in particular. I mean, I, I'm so proud that one year uh, we, we had a full one hour of Bear Grylls on NBC dedicated to really showing uh, with Bear and Julia Roberts taking a very difficult trek up into the rural parts of Kenya, how hard it is to get cold chain vaccines to kids who are really, really far from uh, any facilities. And by, by doing that, we're so close to eradicating this extraordinary, eradicating polio, I think for many people seemed like something that could never happen, potentially like, you know, we look at ending child poverty. But the fact is, by coming together, by getting those vaccines across the world, thanks to incredibly generous, um, again, with that, that program in particular, uh, the Gates Foundation has been instrumental in helping helping us fund, um, we're able to really see major impacts in vaccinations across the world. So that's that's another example. Yeah, that's a, a great, great example. One, you, you, you know that's near and dear to my heart. Well, there's Janet- one, There's one more that I wouldn't mind talking oh, about. please, please. Is, is Covenant House. And that's one where we're actually working with them both domestically and internationally in, South, in, in Central America. Um, but they are such an extraordinary program in that, or, or, or um, organization that is really helping the most vulnerable children. And, you know, often when I go around the country and to places where we are um, focusing our efforts. I've met with some alums, as an example, in the case of Covenant House. Uh, we, I met with a young man who had been homeless when he was 14 years old for four years in Los Angeles. And to meet him years later as a, as a man who had um, not only been brought into Covenant House, but importantly had been really been given the therapy and the, the support and and a roof over his head, um, as well as training that allowed him to get an amazing job for which he then went on to buy his own home as well as help his family. I mean, there are stories like that and there are so many uh, that demonstrate that again, that small, that small gesture can have a life transforming impact. No, oh, that, that is inspiring. As you look back over your career, what are you most proud of having accomplished? Well, I think, listen, I, I, I got a little a little sense of the power of, of storytelling and entertainment to have this type of positive change when I worked on Idol Gives Back. And that was a, you know, I, I saw that in just a, a couple of hours of, tele, of primetime TV with an enormous audience, the tens of millions of dollars could be, um, could be raised. But importantly, also, the American public was exposed to things that they may not have really, you know, suddenly you are putting the issues of, of eradication of polio and the issues of homelessness and food insecurity in living rooms across the country. So I think I'm most proud now that I've been able to take a lot of experience and put it um, towards something that uh, is, is really the things I know and love, making television shows and con creating content, working with talent, but importantly, being able to really, ra really raise awareness and funds to help so many millions of children. Wow, uh, it, that's really inspiring. The, um... As you look back, what's the most important lesson you've learned? It's, it's interesting. You know, I started my career on the TV production side. So a lot of, like, like many, it was very much storytelling and production. It was very, it was very creative. Um, but over time, I, I did move into organizations, especially digitally, where data started to become an important part of this. So I think an important lesson is that blending of art and science. And, the, and it's really been in critically important here because, again, the storytelling definitely brings people in and the humor um, is, is very inviting. And then those serious stories and, and great appeal films truly open hearts and minds and wallets. Um, but if you, in order to really close that, um, that last mile to getting donations, there's quite a bit that you need to really apply in terms of data and understanding what is it that is gonna make the difference? Why is somebody going to pick up their phone or go online or, or frankly pick up heart? We still we actually still have hardline phones on the night of TV um, to make that donation and really understanding the science as well as the art has been a big lesson. And why is this work important to you personally? I think we all get that this is important, that someone should do it. Uh, why, why did you feel responsible to be a part of this? 
You know, when I was first brought in to learn about comic relief in Red Nose Day, I was honestly shocked to learn how big this issue was here in America. I think I, like most Americans, understood it was a serious issue outside the U.S. But when I learned that there are 13 million children, that's almost one in five children in America that is suffering, um, that doesn't have the very basics. And the basics of, you know, if you think about any child in your life, um, in my life, you know, how precious every child is. And to think that they might go home they might go to bed hungry, to think that they might uh, miss school because of a toothache, to think that they wouldn't have a safe place after school or a safe place at all, that they're living in a car with their mother and brother. Um, there are just these stories that are incredibly, um, they're heartbreaking, but I, I think I realized that we had the potential to really raise awareness of these issues and to, and with that, raise a lot more empathy around the issues, create a more compassionate society that understands the importance of all of us coming together in whatever small way we can to make a difference. And we can solve this. This is a solvable problem. And I think it just needs more awareness and more, and more heart. Oh, fantastic. Now, uh, Janet, what is your superpower? <laughs> well, some people say it's that I don't, I've never suffered jet lag. So that's a bit of a superpower. That um, is a superpower. <laughs> yes. Um, it's helped me as I've had to work in many parts of the world and travel a lot. Um, I'd say that, you know, my, my superpower uh, might be, from a professional standpoint, I'd say it's partnership. I've been really... Uh, I recognize how critical it is. We would never have achieved, you know, right now, after four years in the US, with one and a half million charities to choose from, we have over 60% awareness. And 45% of Americans could actually tell you that we're a charity that is focused on children living in poverty. So it's a pretty extraordinary thing. And it's partnerships that have given us that scale. If we weren't, as you said, at Walgreens from coast to coast, almost every corner of the country, uh, red noses, as well as this full store takeover and employees that love Red Nose Day so much and really passionately tell all these Americans who come in their doors every day um, about Red Nose Day. If it weren't for NBC giving us the platform of a three hour telecast, if it weren't for Mars and M&Ms utilizing every opportunity they have from billboards to NASCARs, um, you know, that I, we would not have this type of profile. And so I'd say partnership is my superpower. Yeah, that's a great superpower. Nothing like collaboration to increase yes. an impact, you know, to create that synergy for impact. That's great. Well, Janet, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. I know you're extremely busy and I appreciate you making the time for it. Before you go, would you take just a minute and tell people how they can learn more about Comic Relief USA, Red Nose Day, and how they can connect with you personally? Absolutely. So don't forget, Red Nose Day is on the Thursday before Memorial Day. So in the kickoff to the summer, which for most of us was the best time of our lives and for kids living in poverty is a really sad time. So this is a way for you to remember those who maybe were not as privileged as you. Um, and the things that we would hope that you do is make sure again, you go to Walgreens and you buy a nose or two or five. Um, and you again, wear that nose with pride, take a selfie, post it, show that you care. Um, and make a donation by either watching the night of TV where we'll take those donations, but equally across a peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers or going online to rednoseday.org and making a donation directly. So just remember, every dollar really counts, even big or small. Uh, we want as many Americans in the country to recognize that we're a gateway of giving that helps you um, help the most, the children who need it the most. Oh, fantastic. Well, again, thank you so much for being with us, Janet. We wish you every success in a, having a wonderful, successful uh, Red Nose Day this year. Thank you so much, Devin. Really appreciate it. And don't forget, nose is on. <laughs> All righty. Let's do some good. Thank you. Welcome to the Your Mark on the World show with your champion of social good, Devin D. Thorpe.